Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we currently have a big project in progress, building an orbital station around Bop. Now we've found a classy asteroid and we have docked with it and we can move it around a bit. However, it is currently extremely heavy and we have very small amounts of fuel. So we are mining it out and converting it into fuel, and we are getting more fuel and getting less mine or getting less uh, less asteroid to move. So we're going to keep letting that happen, and in the meantime, we should probably position a satellite in a specific orbit of Tylo. Now this is a three-star prestige mission. We would need to have a resource survey scanner on the satellite as well as a materials bay. Okay. This is definitely the one we want to do because we have 35 years to do it and we have 39 for the vault. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have to make ourselves a new satellite and this is going to be a variation on our odd one. We're probably going to make an odd one Mark V stupid edition, which we may already have. Mm, nope, we don't. Okay, well we'll go ahead and load this up. Here's an odd one Mark V. Now, in order for this to work, we are working on the Tylo one. We need a mystery goo unit. So we have one. A resource survey scanner. That is specifically, I believe, this guy. So we're not going to have a relay antenna on this. We are instead going to be having a standard communitron. And we're going to stick that right there. That'll be fine. And let's see here. Resource survey scanner. We'll need a materials bay. We'll stick that right up on top. We'll need in the science a materials bay. And then the survey scanner on top of that. And then maintain stability for 10 seconds. And then we'll have to get a certain orbit. Shouldn't be too bad. Now the main question is, how much delta-v do we have in this? Plenty, is the answer. Okay. So I'm going to call this the Odd One Mark V Stupid Edition, as I said. Because I don't want to put this up if I don't have a contract for it. This is just a kind of dumb and wasteful design. But such is contracts. So we're going to need to get this thing into Julian orbit relatively quickly. So we'll just do a very, very simple ascent guidance. Off we go. It won't take very long to get there. We'll put the maneuver planner, I guess, over here for now. Mech Jeb, you can get over there. Actually, I do want the Delta V stats up. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, we do have a bit of rolling going on. That's pretty typical for Mech Jeb. I don't know why it does that, but whatever. I don't like this angle, so I'm going to go ahead and keep rolling. And we will just go in at this angle instead, which I like much better. Now the engines aren't stacked on top of each other as we're trying to pitch this way. <laughs> oh boy. Sometimes, Mech Jeb. Sometimes. Anyway, this thing will very, very easily get to where we need to go. The question then becomes, why is this so challenging? This is apparently a three-star mission. Well, we've been putting satellites over Julian moons forever. So what's so challenging on about this? Uh, that's the question. Um, apoapsis. Oh, we're just going retrograde. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. Longitude of ascending node, 293.9 degrees. Argument of periapsis, 130 degrees. I mean, that should be fine, theoretically. Okay. Well, we, as usual, ended up losing one of our tail fins. Honestly, we could probably get rid of our tail fins. I don't think they're not... I, I don't think they're strictly necessary anym anymore, honestly. But we will be getting up to the place where we should stage our fairing pretty soon, since Mech Jeb seems to be <laughs> incapable of that for whatever reason. 
It could be that MacJeb has had an update. I haven't checked in like a month and a half, but that's fine. That is completely fine. I am fine with working with the limitations of MechJeb. In the meantime, I will be deploying this fairing right about now. There we go. And our apoapsis height will be reaching our target height momentarily when that happens. As usual, I will be turning on RCS in order to stop the pitch from the atmosphere. There we go. RCS on, stop our pitch, RCS off. Excellent. Now, as soon as we hit space at 70 kilometers, I'm going to go ahead and lock to prograde and just burn. Prograde, burn. Let's get out of here. I can't help but notice that you slightly missed prograde, MechJeb. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Anyway, we're just going to burn prograde until we get out of orbit of Kerbin. And until we break the Kerbin sphere of influence. That will be the ideal scenario. And off we go. Ish. Off we go, ish. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Now we're starting to get somewhere. So our target for right now, for the time being, will be Jewel. This is, of course, our station, if you want to call it that right now. It is currently in a kind of awkward location. It'll be passing the orbit of Jewel, but, I mean, we'll see when it gets actually close. I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. And let's just go ahead and do a match planes with target. Whenever the next node is. Ah, uh, we're not in the sphere of influence yet. Okay, whatever. We'll warp here. It's only three days out. Off we go. Fantastic. And of course, in the meantime... Our station is currently converting that asteroid into additional fuel, increasing its thrust to weight, and also increasing the amount of fuel it has. So we'll create and execute that. And then once we are done... Oh, node in T-1 year? Okay, uh, we're not going to do that quite yet. Just go ahead and go to the node. I just want to go over here and check at the grabber mark 1. I don't want to completely mine this asteroid. Actually, I should I should look it up and find out what exactly happens when the resources are depleted. So let's find that out, shall we? KSP asteroid or depletion. What happens? Hmm. Like, does the asteroid go away, is the question. The mass goes down, obviously. I am aware of that. I don't think the asteroid goes away when you deplete the ore. Let's see. Here we go. What happens when resources are depleted? It will not vanish, it will only be lighter, and you'll not be able to mine it. Excellent. That's perfect, actually. So in that case, with that being what happens, I don't really care about when this goes away. I mean, it's at 93% resources right now, but the mass will continue to drop, and our fuel will continue to fill. <laughs> very, very slowly. Primarily the reason why our fuel is filling so slowly is... Because the temperature is just really high. Hmm, okay. That's intriguing. So, noted then, for future reference, we need to have some radiators or something on these things. Gotcha. Okay, I mean, it'll still work just incredibly slowly. But that's fine. Like I said, I'm not amazingly concerned about if uh, 
I, I'm not amazingly concerned if the mission isn't com completed on time. I'm much more concerned with the mission just getting completed. So let's go ahead and switch to target here. The odd one mark five, that is. And we'll just give that a few years to work. And we'll see what that comes up with. Okay. So let's go ahead and execute this node. And we'll match planes as soon as we can. Actually, hang on a moment. Why is it matching planes there as opposed to matching planes here? At the nearest ascending, descending with the target. There we go. That's better. <laughs> 134 days. Let's do that. Fantastic. We don't really want it at the highest ascending descending node. We want it at the nearest. And then once we're done getting this thing in position, we'll just pop back over to the asteroid and see how we're doing over there. In retrospect, I wish that I had put the uh I, I wish that I put some radiators on there, but it'll be fine, I think. With a very large amount of time warping, like we're doing with all of these Julian operations, it's nice to have something going on in the meantime, and it's also nice to know that I don't have to worry about depleting the asteroid. It's not going to, like, vanish the way it, they do in a lot of games when they're depleted, so that's good. Okay, so we're going to burn about half of our Delta V in our booster stage for this inclination change. That's fine. Not too concerned about that. And we're, of course, not amazingly circular. But it's fine. It should be okay for a home and transfer. We may have to do a little bit of adjustment. But it should be fine. There we go. Excellent. Planes are matched. And let's go ahead and hop over to Jewel. And once we're in this system, let's see here. Tylo is the... this one. That's the one we're going for. So let's go ahead and do a home and transfer to target. Now, we'll create that node and we'll see what that gives us. That's actually not the worst encounter I've ever seen. I want to get it in a little bit closer. So the question is... Do we go prograde or retrograde to get it closer? Looks like we go retrograde, which uh, is going to be a little awkward. Uh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to recreate this. There we go. And then we need to go a bit retrograde, but the camera angle is awkward. Okay. So... Like this, we are going to be going the same direction as Tylo, but we want our orbit to be retrograde. So we actually want to go slightly prograde from here, and we want to be going this direction to enter. Other Whoa, other... Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, boy. Mouse wheel got a little sensitive there. There. That is nice. Maybe a minor inclination change once we get there, but that should be basically perfect. And note in only 59 days, too. That is glorious. That's exactly what I'm looking for right there. Now, we do have this infrared, or not infrared, we do have this survey scanner here. We're not going to deploy it until we get to the location. We could start setting up some refueling stations here and there and such, but... I mean, realistically, we do have this asteroid station now, and it can refuel itself. It has a finite amount of fuel there, to be sure. Unlike the other celestial bodies, asteroids can be depleted. But ultimately, I want it to be depleted. We might send another, like, a secondary grabber to deplete it faster or something? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. We're getting close to the end of my play session, so I'll think about it for most of the rest of the week. And next week, hopefully I'll have come to a decision on how to handle all of that. It was still kind of fun doing an asteroid capture thing, though. I mean, we're still in progress, but I've never really done much with asteroids. 
kind of fun to mess with. Okay, so this burn will be happening momentarily. It'll be 2,400 meters per second. We can physics warp it once we are done with our mainsail engine. So that will be fantastic. About a one minute burn with our mainsail. And the mainsail's gone. And a 15 minute burn. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so I'm going to physics warp the burn. And that'll be going on for a little bit. And in the meantime... Our sentinel is here, our grabber is here, and it does bear noting that we don't have a relay module on that, on that asteroid station. And it is in kind of an interesting spot as it is. I mean, it's not in orbit over BOP like the contract wants it to be. That would be in orbit here. Which is going to require a fair amount of fuel. Luckily, there's a fair amount of asteroid there, and we can convert a lot of it into fuel. It'll just be interesting to see, after this mission, how much of it has actually been converted. That'll tell me if we are ever going to be able to move this thing in a reasonable time frame for completing the, the actual the, the contract. I'm not too keen on actually completing the contract if necessary. I mean, I, I'd like to get the, the money from completing the contract, but if we don't have the ability to get there in time, I'm okay with just pushing it in there in a couple decades, you know? And I mean, realistically, that would still be within the time frame, but we'll see. It, it takes a couple of years, like three to four years, to insert these satellites. So that's going to be what we're going to be working on for a while, while we work on mining out that asteroid and making it easier to move. Nice little bit of multitasking there. Yeah, I, I like this asteroid system. I haven't experimented with it much at all, primarily because it was added and I just kind of ignored it. <laughs> but that's kind of cool, the way that the asteroid works. In retrospect, of course, I would very much have liked to... Uh, or rather, in retrospect, I should have put some... Hang on a moment. I just had a thought. Hypothetically, what would happen if I were to drop another grabbing arm... Or another grabbing module onto there and grab onto the asteroid and have it just be a cooling module. Would that be effective? I actually don't know. And unfortunately, by the time you see this video, I'll have already recorded, so I might try it. We'll see, that would be intriguing. If you can do that, that'd be really cool. I mean, I am planning on dropping a couple of other modules on there. We'll need a little bit more fuel on there. We'll need three engineers and a facility supporting at least ten Kerbals, which isn't that bad to put on, since we have max tech. That'll be interesting. I'll have to try that, I think. Maybe we'll do that after this insertion. This insertion is going to go for a little while, but we still have like 39 years for the insertion over Vol. So that's fine. Yeah, I think, realistically, I think we're fine. So once we get here, once we get here, <laughs> actually, I'm just going to start us warping. It's going to be two years. And let's add a maneuver here. We're going to burn retrograde a fair amount down to about here. What is this encounter? Oh, we actually get a Tylo encounter right there. Look at that. That's actually pretty neat. It's a brief one, but we get an encounter. And it should be enough. It's a few days long, I think. Uh, maybe not a few days. It's a few hours long, I think. Yeah, that should be cool. Let's, uh, let's stop this auto-warp for right now. I just want to hop into Tylo 
and see just how long this is. Two years, 52 days, four hours. It's about an hour. Okay. Uh, can we get it any better? We can get it relatively good, actually. Have it be something kind of like that. Except raise it up. Change the inclination a bit. Something kind of like that. I mean, we would need to change our apoapsis a fair amount. Or come in the other direction. But we don't want to do that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, we would have to pay the delta V any way you slice it. So, if we're, like, out here-ish, that would give us how long? 52 days, 4 hours. 52 days, 5 hours. Okay, not a huge amount of time. <laughs> but let's execute that node. That should be good. We're going to be going the correct direction. It's a relatively low amount of delta V. It's a single burn. I like it. Node in T-2 years, to be sure. But... Yeah, that should be good. Our inclination is almost perfect since I changed that. We might have to do a small adjustment of our inclination. But overall, this looks quite easy to do. I have no idea why this is a three prestige mission, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Okay, so we've got another two years to burn here. And once we get over here, and once we get this this breaking burn done... Well, let's see here. It is pretty much time to put a cut in. I mean, we've got like three-ish minutes. So I think what's going to happen is I'm going to put a cut in here, and we'll get this breaking burn done. And once we have that good to go, I'll come back with the next episode. Once we get in position and get this contract done, we'll just pop back over to the grabber and see just how much progress it has made. And then I'll decide if I want to try to toss a uh, refrigeration module at that station or not. Yeah, I think that's a pretty decent plan. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and next episode, that's exactly what we're going to do. See you all then.